Let's now examine a case study to further understand the role of kappa in clinical trials. Imagine that you are a monitor for a study and receive a call from the investigator that a participant has missed the study window for dosing. The investigator asks you what to do. You discuss this problem with the study sponsor and are given permission to allow the participant to receive the investigational product up to three days outside the study window. You inform the investigator and the patient receives the investigational product one day outside of the window. During your follow-up discussion with the investigator and CRC, they inform you that they have submitted the protocol deviation to the IRB and placed a signed note to file in the study binder. You ask them to send you a copy of the note to file, which reads, the subject was dosed out of the study window due to logistical errors at this site. We do not expect this problem to occur in the future. As the monitor, what should you do? You should inform the investigator and research team that they must perform and document a Corrective and Preventive Action Plan, or CAPA, to address this issue. A note to file is not sufficient in this instance. If the site is unaware of how to perform a CAPA, you should walk them through all the steps. What is the first step of this CAPA? The study team must investigate the issue and identify how the problem occurred. This activity, known as a root cause analysis, identifies the original cause for the problem and the resulting downstream effects. In general, a root cause analysis should focus on weaknesses in the process rather than errors made by individuals. There are many different ways to conduct a root cause analysis. In this case, the study team conducted a root cause analysis by asking a series of why questions until the root cause for the occurrence was discovered. The study team knows that the problem was that the patient could not be administered the investigational product within the protocol specified study window. The team must ask why this happened. In this case, it happened because the pharmacy was not able to prepare the study drug in time for the visit. The study team must then think about why the pharmacy could not prepare the drug on time. It was because the pharmacy was not informed of the study visit. The study team must then ask why not. It was because the pharmacy messaging system was not working properly. Consequently, the participant had to return the following day to receive the investigational product, which was outside of the dosing window as specified in the protocol. What is the next step in the CAPA? The research team will need to find ways to prevent this problem from recurring. For example, the research team can work with the pharmacist and site IT department to fix the clinical research pharmacy messaging system so that it will work properly in the future. But what if you, the monitor, do not think that the proposed solution would be sufficient? What should you do? You can suggest additional preventive solutions to the research team. For example, having the research coordinator call the pharmacy to confirm the order 24 hours before a participant's study visit. Another option may be to schedule all study participants for the first day of the study window, so that if there are any issues, the visit can be pushed back and still fall within the study window. In all cases, the study team will need to update their SOPs to reflect the new process. What is the next step in the CAPA? The research team must implement the corrective and preventive actions. In this case, the study team already has addressed the problem with two corrective actions. They have requested and received the sponsor's approval to administer the study drug up to three days outside of the study window, and they have reported the protocol deviation to their IRB. The additional corrective action is for the study team to adjust this participant's future infusion windows by one day. Finally, the team will need to implement preventive actions discussed earlier to prevent these types of incidents from occurring in the future. What is the next step in the CAPA? Finally, the study team should put safeguards in place so that this issue does not recur. You, the monitor, should verify that this CAPA is properly implemented during the next interim monitoring visit by checking to see that the participant's visit schedule has been pushed back by one day, examining documentation notifying the pharmacy of study visits, ensuring that visits are scheduled on the first day of dosing windows, and reviewing changes to SOPs. What else should you check to ensure that CAPA is complete? 
You should also verify that the corrective and preventive action plan is properly documented, signed by the author, who may be a CRC, signed by the investigator, dated, submitted to the IRB for review and approval, and kept in the regulatory binder.